Upang mababawi lahat ng mga nasabi mm, Di naman ni nakalang ikay darating lang bigla Nang walang babala Sa isang iklap nagpago Taki
Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was born for you and me. He came to bring the good news from sin to set us free. The blind, the deaf, the lame, the poor, His power meant to see. He gave His life upon the cross, eternal life to keep. Shed wine before his agony We share the body and the blood in his memory To make his message known is our responsibility So here we are to pledge our lives to the Lord of eternity
no? Parang mababaw lang naman yan, no? Sino may sabi na tatakot ako? Ayang kaya ko yan, ang babaw lang yan eh! Sige kayang kaya mo yan eh. Sa pagkinabani ka, smile ka lang. Okay? By the way, ako nga pala si Big Kokoy. Nice with you, Kokoy. Ako nga pala si Inja. Salamat sa pagsagap sa akin. Inja. <laughs>
and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our, our activity. My name is Jamel Santos and I will be your MC for today. Today we are presenting Restless Heart, Consolonian's Devotion to Wisdom, a webinar on the occasion of the 1668th birth anniversary, anniversary of our patron Saint Augustine. Now, let's begin with a uh, nationalistic song to be by a uh, audio visual presentation to be followed by opening prayer to be led by Mr. Lionel Velarde. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal God, who are the light of the minds that know you, enlighten our minds so that we may become or devoted to wisdom, and so become thought leaders in our professions, guided by the teachings of our Father, St. Augustine. Eternal God, the joy of the hearts that love you. Open our hearts so that we may be devoted to service and so become servant leaders in our communities, inspired by the life of our Father, St. Augustine. Eternal God, the strength of the wills that serve you. Grant us determination so that we may be zealous in our dedication to share the knowledge that we gain, formed by the Consolanian values of unitas, caritas, and veritas for the common good of our society. Grant us to know you, that we may truly love you, and so to love, that we may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady of Consolation, pray for us. Saint Monica, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Sir Velarde. Uh, bago po tayo magpatuloy sa ating programa, 
Uh, binabati ko po ang ating mga kaklase, ang mga iba pang tao na nanonood sa live. Good afternoon, Ma'am Tess Carpio, Ma'am Maralyn Adriano. Good afternoon, Sir Redeemer Dong Salabonitilla. Sa aking partner, Sir Jervy, good afternoon po. Watching from Caloocan City. Uh, hope to uh, get well soon, Sir. Ma'am Escasina Spritzy, good afternoon po. Ma'am April Fernando Martinez, good afternoon po. Sir Dan Dandan Abuela, uh, good afternoon po. Uh, to give us the opening remarks, uh, let us watch this video from, from Sir Ademir. Good afternoon everyone. Ako po si Redeemer Lidic Abonitalia, taking up Masters in Public Administration. Ang motivation ng quote na ito ni St. Augustine ay masasabi ko malapit sa aking pagkatao. Totoo na ang love ay may kita mo sa pagtulong mo sa kapwa. Hindi naman ako namulat sa maramiyang pamumuhay at dumanas din ako at ang aking pamilya sa panahon ng pangangailangan at kagutuman. May mga oras na humihingi ako ng tulong sa aking mga kaibigan. Pero mas madalas na kusa silang nagbibigay ng tulong sa akin kahit hindi ko na sila lapitan. Nagpapasalamat ako sa Diyos dahil binigyan niya ako ng mga kaibigan na may busilak na kalooban. Kaya naman ngayon, kahit papano ay may kapisadad na akong tumulong sa iba, hindi ako nag-aatubuli na magbigay ng kalinga para sa kanila. Nagsimula ako sa wala. Alam ko ang pakiramdam ng salat sa buhay. Kaya sa lahat ng biyayang natanggap ko noon nung ako'y nangangailangan, ay gusto ko din ibahagi ito sa iba. Ngayon kaya ko na. Masaya ang matulungan ka. Pero mas masaya sa puso ang makatulong ka sa iba. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Sir Red. Um, para sa isang kaunting kamustahan, kamusta po ang lahat na live, nanonood ng live sa ating Facebook? Under... Read po ng 1 to 5. Kamusta po tayo? Are we ha? Masaya po ba ang ating mga puso? Comment po tayo dyan sa ating comment box. Kamusta po ang bawat isa? Sana po ay okay po tayong lahat. Ayun, si partner Jervy. Uh, sana gumaling ka na agad-agad. Five, happy po. Hi, Ma'am Lay. Si Ma'am Tess, may papusong heart. Mukhang in love at masaya si Ma'am Tess. Si Ma'am Lay din. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Ma'am Maralyn Adriano, five po, super happy. Ma'am, kinakabahan ba o happy talaga? Ma'am Desiree, may papuso si Ma'am Desiree. Si Sir Jaser, five po. Masayang masaya si Sir. Para sa, para mas lubos po nating makilala ang ating speaker ngayong araw, tinatawagan ko po si Sir Leonardo Aisugi para sa introduction ng ating speaker. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, who is going to talk us about our webinar's topic entitled, Restless Heart, Consolanian's Devotion to Wisdom. As we celebrate the 1668th anniversary of our Holy Father, Augustine. This is a topic in which we should all be deeply interested because our speaker himself has a restless heart and mind in imparting his knowledge, expertise, and time to learners and professionals. 
Our speakers spent almost his entire career inspiring and teaching people in various universities as an assistant professor, such as Our Lady of Fatima University, College of St. Benilde, and Manila Central University. Not to mention that our speaker finished his master's degree in philosophy at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and became a master teacher too at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School from 2016 up until 2021. And from June 2021 up to the present, he is now an education program supervisor in the Department of Education in Region 3. He also earned his doctorate in public administration at the same university that we are in right now, which is La Consolation University of Philippines. So ladies and gentlemen, without further delay, please join me in welcoming and giving a virtual round of applause to Dr. Edwin Erwin Pagpalunan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for that uh, generous introduction, Sir Leo. So first, I would like to give my respects to everyone who is in the platform and Sir Ezek, Sir, Sir Prof. Elo, who is in the platform. No? So thank you for inviting. It's my honor to be sharing my thoughts on Augustinian values. But uh, however, I would be talking about reshaping of philosophical thought which is also related to our incessant search for truth and wisdom. So let me just present my slide. Okay, so it's entitled Reshaping of Philosophical Thought. Why, why did I call this Reshaping of Philosophical Thought? Because we would be talking about basic concepts in philosophy, but this is not merely philosophical in nature. But this would be one way of looking at how we approach the search for truth or how we look at wisdom, which is an incessant or lifetime search for truth or wisdom. First, let us deal with the leveling of expectations. So at this point, I would ask Ms. Jimel to read the comments of our live audience and what do you expect from the discussion or webinar today? Sige, baka meron mag-post lang. Kindly post or write your comments on our comment box in the Facebook Live. And I would be asking Miss Jimel to read some of them, if there are. So again, the question is how, what do you expect from our webinar or discussion this afternoon? Uh, yes, Doc. Um, Atay po tayo ng kanilang mga comments. Mm. Comment lang po tayo sa mga in-expect natin for today's discussion. Yan. Ako po, Doc, nag-expect po ako na marami po ako matututunan mula sa inyo. Mm. Sure naman po na lagi po marami ako natututunan sa klase pa lang po natin ng lalo po <laughs> ngayon. You, you. Marami po talaga thank ako you. natututunan. Alam ko rin po yung mga klase ko at yung mga ibang nanonood. Ay marami oh. rin po ngayon na-expect na matututunan sa inyo. Salamat naman kung ganun. So if there are no comments yet, siguro later during the course of our discussion, just feel free to write your comments or expectations. Okay. Kung wala pa, sige tuloy tayo. So the presentation outline would be as follows. We would be dealing with some misconceptions about philosophy and then proceed to the nature of philosophy and look into who is a wise person. And uh, let's conclude. No, We will be having our conclusion about the search for truth and wisdom. Parang may nag-comment yata, hindi ko lang nabasa. Parang wait lang ha. Experiences and insights about spiritual life yata. Okay, let's see. So, here are some misconceptions about philosophy. For people, philosophy first and foremost is very abstract. Pag sinabi natin very abstract, very theoretical. Ayun, yun yung kasunod. Ano? Most people has this perception that philosophy is abstract. When we talk about abstract, it's really very highly theoretical, highly conceptual. 
Puro ideas lang yan. So it deals mostly with concepts and theories. Di ba? Parang mahirap. Mahirap pag-aralan. Mahirap intindihin. Very abstract. More than that, they say that philosophy also is out of touch with reality. Hindi naman practical yung philo. Hindi naman practical yung wisdom. Hindi naman practical yung search for truth. So they have this perception that philosophy is out of this world or out of touch with reality. Pag, pag sinabi mo, halimbawa, tanong mo kung ano yung course mo, or I'm taking a bachelor of arts in philosophy, so people will say, what is that? So they, they don't know it. They, don't, they are not familiar with philosophical concepts. And then they would say that philosophy is only for the intelligent and gifted few. Para sa mga matatalino lang yan. Para sa mga nakaka-appreciate ng philosophical ideas and concepts. But we beg to disagree, no? We beg to disagree. Now, this webinar, since it is uh, devoted to our search or devotion for wisdom, we would be connecting that. We would be answering these misconceptions and deal with the nature of philosophy as a discipline and would answer our devotion to wisdom. St. Augustine himself, for the information of everyone, is a philosopher. He was characterized as a medieval philosopher alongside St. Thomas Aquinas. Isa sa mga institusyon yan sa philosophy nung medieval period. So let's look into the nature of philosophy for those who are not familiar. The term philosophy derives from two Greek words. It's philosophia. Yung Greek word niya ay philosophia which consists of two Greek words, philia, which means love, and sophia, which means wisdom. So literally speaking, if we translate it literally, it will mean love of wisdom. Philosophia. Love of truth. So therefore, it a philosopher is a lover of wisdom. There is this adage attributed to Pythagoras on uh, being a wise man and a lover of wisdom. Out of humility, Pythagoras would prefer himself to be called a lover of wisdom rather than a wise man. Because Pythagoras acknowledges the limits of the human mind and he would say that I cannot know everything even if I want to, but it does not preclude me or stop me from searching for the truth or searching for wisdom. And philosophy also is a field of general or deeper reason, general search over deeper reason, structure or sense of reality, or an existence as well as the ultimate conditions of valuable comprehension, or the supreme rule of a human behavior, historically changeable regarding the content and methods, according to Stephen, in 2007. So we are looking for the deepest causes of things. So at this point, we can distinguish philosophy and science, which is not all, which is not in the PowerPoint. Science is a search for causes also, but science is a is a search for proximate causes, while philosophy or the love of wisdom from the word itself, philosophia is a search for the ultimate principles and causes of all things. The search for the meaning of life. Okay? To proceed. According to Mabakyao, Dr. Napoleon Mabakyao, who was formerly the department chair of the University of the Philippines Philosophy Department, and I think Lasal also, philosophy, according to Mabakyao, is not merely an academic subject or a purely intellectual activity. Kaya hindi lang sa subject. Kasi nga, ang perception, very abstract siya. Para sa matatalilo lang yan, Sir Erwin o Dr. Erwin, hindi namin alam yan. No? But according to Dr. Mabakyao, philosophy is not merely an academic subject or a purely intellectual endeavor. Which was uh, echoed by Isidoro et al. He says that philosophy is not a theory but a vision of life. It's a vision of life. Therefore, 
We do not learn about philosophy, but we do philosophy. At this point, let me share with you, sapagkat ang filosofiya ay ginagawa by Father Roque Ferriols from the, uh, from the Ateneo de Manila University, another institution this time of Filipino philosophy. So let me read. May mga taong gusto raw matutong lumangoy, sabi ni Father Ferriols, nakasuot, panlangoy na sila, at sama-sama silang nakatayo sa tabi ng swimming pool. May notebook at ballpen ang bawat isa. Nagsalita na ang guro. Una sa lahat, Anya, pagsanay ka na muna magtampisaw sa tubig. Tapos, wag huminga pero idilat mo ang mga mata mo at pagpapasailalim sa tubig. Tapos, basta't dumapa. Huwag matakot, lulutang ka. Tapos, matutong gumalaw ng paa, matutong gumalaw ng kamay, matutong huminga at paulit-ulit na pagsikapan ang pagtyagaan ang practice. Ganyan yung mga words talaga ni Father Ferriols. Habang siya nagsasalita, masipag nilang sinusulat ang lahat ng sinasabi niya. So yung mga estudyante yung gusto lumangoy, sinusulat yung sinasabi ng swimming instructor. Verbatim, word by word, sinutol na sa notebook. At ngayon, patuloy niya sabi, ito ang swimming pool, oras ng magsimula, lundagin mo baby. Sabi nila, lumundag na kayo. Hoy, sa tubig na kayo, sabi ng instructor. Walang kabuluhan ang sulat-sulat kung hindi nyo ginagawa. Wala pa rin lumundag, sulat pa rin sila ng sulat. Hoy, kising, hindi ba ninyo nakikita na nag aaksaya lamang tayo ng panahon? Pero natuwa pa rin sila. Masasabi nila o masasabi ng bawat isa na kumpleto na ang kanyang notebook. Na isulat na nila ang bawat sinabi ng guro. Kaya't inaakala nilang natuto na sila. Ayaw nilang lumundag. Pero para sa kanila, eh marunong na silang lumangoy. So ano yung ibig sabihin ng kwento ni Father Ferriols? For Father Ferriols, philosophizing is not a theory or philosophy is not really theoretical. Philosophizing is an activity. That's why we call it philosophizing. We do philosophy rather than learn about it. In fact, we philosophize every day. Our search for wisdom is every day. It's lifelong and incessant. It does not stop. Patuloy yan eh, di ba yung search for knowledge? Now, sino nga ba yung wise person? Or a lover? How do we consider ourselves as lovers of wisdom? So, first and foremost, let us remember, a truly wise person is not someone who knows everything, but someone who knows what he does not know. Ay sir, paano nangyari yun? How did it happen that A truly wise person, na according to our sources in philosophy, is not someone who knows everything, but someone who knows what he does not know. During the time of the Greek philosophers, there were sophists. Sophists. Yung mga sophists, they claim to know everything. But here comes Socrates. One of the great Greek philosophers. Tapos they went to the Oracle of Delphi. Kinanong nila yung Oracle of Delphi. Sino ang wisest man? Sinabi ng Oracle si Socrates. Pero may mga sophists nun. So according to Socrates, ang truly wise man is aware of his own ignorance. Now, why is that so? Because our devotion to wisdom or our search for wisdom, our search for the truth is incessant. It's non-stop. It's lifelong. So if you consider yourself as you know everything, ang pagtingin mo sa sarili mo, you know all things, you will not learn anymore. Right? But when you see yourself as you don't know this, it will be your drive for you to know it and you would be improving yourself. 
Yun ang sinasabi. Ang totoong matalinong tao ay hindi ang taong alam ang lahat, kundi ang tao na alam kung ano ang hindi niya alam. Nang sa gayon, siya ay gumawa ng paraan upang malaman at magkaroon ng kasagutan sa kanyang mga katanungan. Right? Now, another characteristic of a wise person. A wise person holds beliefs that are not only true, but which he or she can also justify. That person must have strong reasons for holding on to his or her belief. That's why in philosophy, you have the concept called justified and reasoned belief. Yun dapat naniniwala ka kasi alam mo yung orason, ba't mo pinananiwala ng isang bagay? It is not only blind obedience to certain dogmas or doctrines. Oops! Wala tayong pinatatamaan ha! According to philosophers, a truly wise person does not only believe but has strong reasons for, sorry, for what he believes in. May rason. Hindi ka lang basta naniniwala. Hindi lang siya act of blind obedience to certain dogmas or doctrines. Therefore, there is what we call the confluence of faith and reason. Faith and reason, which was very evident during the time of St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas during the medieval period. Hindi necessarily dapat pag-awayin ng faith and reason. For these philosophers, faith and reason should complement each other. Hindi basta maniniwala ka lang sa isang bagay. Dapat alam mo yung rason ba't ka naniniwala. You don't just don't believe in God. You are not blindly obe- ob- uh, obeying your pastor or your priest. You believe in God because you know in yourself that we have a good and loving God. And you experience yourself the goodness and love of God. Diba? Ganun siya. Next. A wise person knows about things that are valuable in life. Like knowledge, like wisdom, like beauty. Diba? So, and a wise person can put his or her knowledge to practical application. Let's again emphasize learning by doing in, in education. Gone are the days when educating children are merely theoretical. Diba? Sulat sa blackboard, kopyahin sa notebook, magtetest tayo later. Hindi na ganun ang pagtuturo. Now, we emphasize learning by doing. Or to paraphrase, philosophizing by doing. We learn by doing. That's why, for example, I emphasize uh, most of you here are my students or had been my students in the graduate school. So that's why I emphasize in our classes in the graduate school. We do not talk about theories here. Let's talk about our best practices. We consider it as a sharing of ideas whenever we have classes. So let's share our best practices in our respective agencies and institutions so that we can know where we are at. And let's identify also points for improvement in our respective institutions. Therefore, a wise person not only knows what is true, but also knows what is good or what is ought to be done. In certain situations, and you act accordingly. So it's not enough that you know what is good. You do what is good. Di ba, hindi lang sapat na alamin mo yung ano'y tama, eh, gawin mo sa, sa makakaya natin, gawin natin yung tama. At makabubuti para sa lahat. Kung hindi man para sa lahat, para sa nakararami. Common good lagi inisip natin. No? So, yun. 
Another thing, ito yung allegory of the cave, another famous analogy for true wisdom. So Plato begins by having Socrates ask Glaucon to imagine a cave where people have been imprisoned from childhood but not from birth. These prisoners are chained so that their legs and necks are fixed. So nakafix yung legs and neck. Forcing them to gaze at the wall in front of them and not to look around at the cave each other or themselves. So let's imagine the situation. Prisoners na naka-chain to their necks. So hindi ka makakagalaw. So ano lang nakikita mo? Yung wall in front of you. Okay? So you cannot move around. Behind the prisoners is a fire. So nakaharap sa wall, may fire. Okay? And the prisoners is raised walkway, do sa taas nila may raised walkway with a low wall behind which people walk carrying objects or puppets of men and other living things. So pag may duman, ang nakikita nila shadow of what just passed by because of the fire. So the fire reflects the shadow nakikita nila projected on the wall. But the question is, What are they seeing? Are they seeing what is real? Or are they seeing shadows? Sige. Let's answer. A few answers from our comments section. Nakaharap sa wall yung mga tao. Ano nakikita? Shadow or the real thing? Atin kung may comments. Do they see the shadows or do they see the real thing? Okay, mayroon bang comments? You can uh, read the comments ha, si Jimel. Patulong ako mag-read ng comments. So remember that these people are chained from neck. So they cannot see what is behind them. So of course, what they are seeing are shadows. Okay, let's continue. The people walk behind the wall so their bodies do not cast shadows for prisoners to see, but the objects they carry. Just as puppet showmen have screens in front of them in which they work their puppies. Halimbawa, may daladalang, may buhat-buhat yung tao, nakikita nila shadows. The prisoners cannot see any of what is happening behind them. They are only able to see the shadows cast upon the cave wall in front of them. The sounds of the people. Sige, baka may answers sa uh, Miss Jimel. Pwede nating i-ano. Pwede nating i-read yung comments nila no. Baka may mga ano sila doon sa May comments ba kung ang nakikita ba ay shadows or real thing? Yes sir. Um from Ma'am Kalyon May, shadow. Mm-hmm. From, shadows. From Ma'am mm-hmm. Marco, shadow. Ma- Ma'am Escasinas, Pitsi, Shadow, Sir Leonel, so, Shadow. Obviously, ang nakikita nila, Shadows. Hindi yung real thing, no? Kasi nga, not, yes, ito ah, picture nyo ulit. They are behind the wall. In front of them is a wall. And behind them is a fire. So magpo-project ng Shadows. So, tingnan natin. Kaya nakikita nila puppets. So the prisoners cannot see any of what is happening behind them and they're only able to see the shadows cast upon the cave wall. The sounds of the people talking, echo of the walls, And the prisoners believe these sounds are real. Right? Ang paniniwala nila, these sounds are real. The shadows are real. Okay? Let's continue. Socrates suggests that the shadows are reality for the prisoners because they have never seen anything else. They don't realize that what they see are shadows of objects in front of a fire. Much less than these objects are inspired by real things outside the cave which they do not see. Remember, they are chained. Okay, they are chained. The fire or human-made light in the puppets used to make shadows are done by the artist. Plato, however, indicates that the fire is also the political doctrine that is taught and the shadows to teach them. No? Also, few humans will ever escape the cave. So this is not an easy task. You have to exert a lot of effort for you to escape because you are chained from your neck. Kailangan gumawa ka ng paraan para tumakas ka. Nakakaidena ka eh. 
This is not the some easy task and only a true philosopher with decades of preparation would be able to leave the cave up the steep incline. Most humans will live at the bottom of the cave and a small few will be the major artists that protect the shadows with the same use of human-made light. Now, tingnan natin yung analysis. Once the prisoners are set free or is set free, he will realize that the causes of shadows were the people on the road and the fire. Yun ang cause ng shadow. But, if he is further dragged out of the cave, he would realize that the sun is the source of whatever is true and good for all things. Nakaalis siya sa cave, no? Nakatakas na siya. Nagkaroon na ng enlightenment. Nung una, ang nakita niya, ah, ang source pala ng shadow, yung mga tao. Nakita niya eh. Pero if he would move further from the cave, which would symbolize ignorance, the cave symbolizes ignorance, you would attain enlightenment. If you go out of the cave, which means if we go out of our biases and prejudices, if we go out of our comfort zones, we will attain enlightenment. And once the vision of the good is attained from the sunlight, chances are you would be unwilling and reluctant to go back to the cave. Nakita mo na yung beauty of nature outside. Diba? Nakita mo na siya. Babalik pa ba sa cave? Natural, hindi na. Pero ibang tao nga daw, they are unwilling to go out. So, when we talk about our devotion to wisdom, our continuous search for wisdom is a lifelong process. And enlightenment from our biases is not easy to attain. We have our own biases, whether it's imposed by religion, by culture, by politics, and it's not easy to go out of it. But a true philosopher or a true lover of wisdom attains enlightenment and sees the reality of things. No? So ito na, medyo maikli lang tayo, conclusion na tayo. The search of knowledge or for knowledge of wisdom is not a one-stop shop. It is an unceasing journey towards the truth. So our devotion for the truth is not attained overnight. It's unceasing okay, and lifelong. Therefore, philosophy is not a merely academic subject or discipline but should be construed as a person's way of life. Way of life yan. Ang search for wisdom, ang search for knowledge is not only for the intelligent people. It's every person's responsibility to know the truth. And in some cases, to stand up for the truth and fight for the truth. Socrates rather, when he was discussing his philosophical thoughts, was even perceived as a revolutionary by the authorities because he was going against tradition. You know, he was punished. He was threatened of death. And when the council was meeting, they said to Socrates, we'll set you free, but recant what you said. Socrates did not. So he really fought for the truth. He laid down his life for the truth. And in some cases, we need to defend our positions. We need to defend our beliefs. Okay? Therefore, knowledge of one's ignorance is vital so that we can be liberated from ignorance. The moment one says to himself or herself that I already know everything, stagnation happens and growth ends. I, I guess that would be all. Ano? Actually, we can go for long, pero because of the interest of time, mahaba pa yan. Eh. Parang nag-preview ano lang, nag lang po ng 
history of the philosophical view. But if we will discuss it, it would take us more hours or even days. So thank you for bearing with uh, me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. That's all. Salamat sa opportunity of sharing. Ano? Salamat. Thank you po, Dr. Erwin. Napakadami ko pong natutunan. At sure po ako na ang mga audience natin na nanonood sa live ay marami rin natutunan mula sa inyo. Uh, dadako na po tayo sa reading ng mga um, questions or kung wala pong questions, any comments po or um, sa, sa discussion na ginawa ni Dr. Erwin. Yan from Ma'am Lay. Thank you po, Dr. Erwin. Thank you, thank you din. Yes. Um... Any comments pa po? Yan, mukhang nandyan pa po ba sila? Nanonood pa rin po ba sila? Um, wala naman ako, Doc, makitang questions. Siguro po talaga nalinawan po sila sa inyong discussion kasi napakaganda po talaga ng inyong mga sinabi kanina, Doc. Ayan, ah... Uh, Dadako na po tayo sa awarding ng certificate. Let, uh, let me read po, Doc, yung certificate. Uh, certificate of Appreciation is presented to Professor Erwin Pagtalunan in grateful acknowledgement of his distinguished service rendered as a resource speaker and restless heart to Salenian's devotion to wisdom, a webinar on the occasion of the 1668th birth anniversary of our patron St. Augustine on November 26th by a live stream. Ayan. Thank you po, Doc Irvine. Ayan. Si Ma'am Kim din po. Maraming salamat daw po. Thank you, thank you. That's daw po. Honors, Ma'am. Uh, happy to be of service. Sabi nga ng mga to. Happy to serve lang tayo. When I was actually informed by Prof. Uh, Elo, Prof. Rudy Angelo, that ano. Actually, nagbiro. Uh, sir, pwede ka ba mag- pag ano ma talk sabi ko kailan ba sa sabado na sir o sige ka ako okay lang actually salamat sa opportunity of uh, sharing kasi lately hindi ko na rin napapag-usapan ng philosophy no sa DPA na ay sa MPA Miss Jimel uh, MPA na yung tinuturo natin so it's good that I I return to my uh, really course na uh, yun talaga ako ay Nasabi nga doon sa akin profile that I was a an AB philosophy and MA philosophy graduate. So happy to share philosophical concepts again. Yun naman yung yung search kasi natin for wisdom. Ang famous quote ni St. Augustine kasi my heart is restless until it find rest in thee. If I'm not mistaken, yun ang kanyang very famous quote. Kaya restless heart yan. My heart is restless or our hearts are restless until they find rest in Jesus Christ. Ganun siya. Ayan, sir. Napakadami pong nag, uh, mm. nag-thank you sa inyo kasi napaka, uh, napakalino po. Uh, napakagaling po talagang professor ng ating Dr. Irwin. Uh, Kasamaan ko po siya sa DepEd. Ayan, um, para po sa closing prayer, uh, dumako na po tayo sa closing prayer at medyo paggabi na po tayo and for the evaluation ayan po nandiyan po sa ating comment box yung evaluation para po sa nangyaring uh, uh, webinar ngayon natuwagan ko po si Ma'am Marilyn for the closing prayer Yan, Ma'am Marlene. Um, uh, okay na po. Yes po. Ganun. Muli po nating uh, ilagay ang ating mga sarili sa banal na presensya ng Panginoon. Uh, Ang ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. 
sa pagkakos ng okasyon na ito, uh, nagpapasalamat kami, mahal na Panginoon, sa gabay at inspirasyon na ibinigay mo sa amin. Salamat sa, pag, sa patuloy na patnubay mo sa mga plano namin upang may sakatuparan ito. Sana paglabas namin sa pagtitipong ito, may isagawa sana naming lahat ang dapat naming gawin para sa ikabubuti ng karamihan. Pinapanalangin namin na sana lagi mo kaming gabayan na makita namin si Kristo sa bawat isa sa amin. Maging mabuti sana kami sa lahat ng tao at maging instrumento kami ng iyong pag-ibig at kapayapaan. Ang lahat ng ito ay gusto sana naming hingin sa pamamagitan ng mabuti mong pangalan. Uh, amen. Amen po. Ayan, maraming salamat Ma'am Marilyn Adriano. Uh, muli nagpapasalamat po kami yung mga taong nasa likod ng um, webinar na ito sa inyong pag-join sa ating webinar. Uh, again, I am Jamel M. Santos. And see you again next time. God bless us all. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po.